has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when he said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. So lift up your heads, O gates. Come on and lift up your heads, everlasting doors, and allow the King of glory to come in. Now, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So lift up your heads, O gates. Come on and lift up your heads, everlasting doors, and allow the King of glory to come in. So who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. At this time, I'll be reading the scripture reading. It'll be coming from the King James Version, Psalms 100. Let us stand for the reading of his word, if you're able. Amen. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that ye, the Lord, is a God. He, it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Father, let thy will be done. Heavenly Father, we just come today just to say thank you today, Lord. Father, we come here because we know, Lord, that when we come into your house of worship, Father, we know that we can bring praises unto your holy name. And Father, we just praise you all day long, my God. Father God, we just know, Lord, that you said we ask, we shall receive, and seek, we shall find. Father, we just thank you today in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we just pray for every member and all that has come here today. Father, we just pray for them, Father God, a special blessing today, Lord. Father, we don't know what they're going through, but Father, you know what they're going through. So, Father God, if they're going through anything, Father, we just pray right now that you would just touch them today, Lord. Father God, just heal them and deliver them and whatever so it may be. Father God, we count it all joy right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just pray, Lord, for those that are on their way. Father God, we pray for traveling mercy for them, Heavenly Father. Father God, that we know, Lord, that it ain't, it's dangerous coming up and down the road. But, Father, we know, Lord, that if we just call on your name, Father God, that is a name that above all names, we know, Lord, that it's nothing that you can't do. And, Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, that this service will be acceptable to you, my God. Father God, as the musicians come forth and, and the singers and all that participates this day, from the ushers to the media to, to all that labors before you, Father, we hope that it be in excellence. Father God, we pray for our pastor today, my God, that you would just give him a fresh, Father God. Anoint him from the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will speak to him. Father, we pray, Lord, that you allow our ears to be able to hear a word from you. But, Father, we pray that we'll put it in action, my God, and be able to share with others, my God, what say the Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, as we stand here before you, Father God, and we go out into the streets, my God, that the light will shine. Because, Father, we know that the light will shine that will draw all men unto you, my God. Because, Father, you are excellent in all that you do. And, Father, we pray for those that are in the hospitals, my God. We pray that, that you would just give them comfort, Father, those that are going for operations or those that may be suffering with some type of sickness. Heavenly Father, we pray now, Lord, that you would just comfort the family and comfort them. And know, Lord, that they can just come to you at any time that you have sent your helper it dwells in us, the Holy Spirit. And Father God, we just pray, Lord, that when we leave here today, that Father, we leave here in a better way than we did when we come through these doors. And Father, we just give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. Praise God for his, for his holy. If it's in, in the first time visitors, will you please stand? We just want to give thanks to everyone who's here on this day and just get, and give praise to God for, for he is worthy to be praised. Um, I'd like to introduce now to you now our uh, witness. Please come up. Um, uh, before that, um, let, uh, for, for everyone who have not seen each other for, for, for days now, find two or three people and just walk them to the walk, walk them to the house of the Lord. Take that seat, please. Uh, then we're going to have um, witness to come up now. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. I know you're excited about being here and seeing each other, yes. so let's, let's bless the Lord first. Yes. Let's bless the Lord. Change the atmosphere from being social yes. to being reverent. How about yes. that? Amen? Amen? We may be few in number, but how many know that God will visit us if we invite him? Yes. We invite his Holy Spirit to be amongst us this morning. It's not the number of people that generate his presence. It's what's going on in our hearts. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to be among us today. Amen. Amen. Did anybody enjoy celebrating the birth of our Lord? Amen. It's worthy of all of us to be reminded that Christmas is far more than the giving and the receiving of gifts. But it was the gift that was given to the world that we should be excited about. And we can do that 365 days a year. Yes. 
366 if it's leap year. Amen. Amen. We're going to just sing something that's familiar this morning. We may be small in number, but we can still give big praise unto the Lord. Yes. When you consider what he's done, some of you don't know what the other person to your left or right may have gone through, but guess what? We're here today, and we're going to give God praise no matter what. And we're going to sing the familiar, Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. Amen? Amen. So you have to be a part of the choir with us. Amen.
like Jesus. Love me like Jesus. He Stressful until you realize that God is still in control. Yes. In spite of what you hear, in spite of what you see, in spite of what you feel, God is working all things together for our good. Yes. And I just believe that today is another chance for us to tell Him it's the last Sunday, believe it or not, in this year. Some of us thought, you know, we don't know if we're going to make it to the end of the year, but how many are glad that He saw fit to spare you? To spare you. The others that passed on weren't less than. Their appointed time came. So while we're still here, we should still give him all that we have as often as we can. So we're just going to bless him again with a familiar song. But it's a song of worship. It's a song of worship. Where it's God words and not about us. It's about him. Amen.
I can search the earth below, but there's no one. Just think about it. There is no one, no one I can search the heavens high. You
just when you want to do something on behalf of him. Amen. And I didn't know this one. I'm like, God, I need to text. I need to write somebody and say, I cannot come in today. I just can't do it. But then I started thinking about people who are on life support. Yes. I started thinking about people who would love to walk if they could. Yes. I started thinking about people who's, whose mind is not what it used to be. They can't even recall what they did yesterday. People who didn't even have food to eat this week and would have done anything for the leftovers you have and I have in my refrigerator. And I say, God, if it's the least thing I can do, I can trust you today to get up and get dressed and get in the car and trust you to get me to 7th and Main because there's something here I need today. I don't know what it is, but I don't know why you came. I didn't come to do church. I came to be the church today to represent him as best as I could. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. 2013 should not end with you're doing the same things you always did. We're not promised tomorrow. I don't know if you get it, but the word tells us everybody has an appointed time to die. And the closer you get to those three score year and ten, you realize... Even though we think, oh, when I'm 70, I would, you're not promised to be 70. And if you have passed 70, God has been extremely generous Amen. to you. Amen. Extremely generous. So when we sing songs, let it not be ritual. Let it be our singing the scripture in such a way that there's a change that comes in our minds and our hearts. So when we end this year, if God is so great, gracious, we'll see another year. And we continue to tell the story about this holy, worthy, faithful God. Amen. Amen. Somebody I'll just give him a hand clap. Give God a hand clap. Give the one that he deserves. The one that he deserves. Thank you, Jesus. So now my brother says we're going to we're going to acknowledge that we're going to acknowledge the glory of the Lord. I can't even speak now. Forgive me. That we're going to acknowledge the glory of the Lord. It's become an anthem. We know it. <laughs> and you know it. So let's just let the glory of the Lord arise in this place. And it should be the glory that you brought within you. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together.
of the Lord. Shout of the Lord. Now, can I have everyone to stand up for the offertory prayer? Tithing teaches us the meaning of faithful and obedience. Often teaches me the meaning of sacrifice. Giving teach me the power of love. I thank you, Lord, for demonstrating your love by giving your own son. Amen.
Hallelujah, and praise God for our singers. Amen, and praise God. It's good to see you in the house of worship. Amen. To know that it was your heart's desire, even through the rain, to make it out. Amen, and praise God. It's great to see you today. I'll just I'll preach with this. Amen, and praise God. We are continuing a series. The series is coming from Isaiah. This is the third part and final part in the series, and the reason we are looking at Isaiah in this Christmas season is because Isaiah is the prophet of the Messiah, or the Savior. Amen? So we are celebrating what this Christmas? The Savior. Amen. So we looked at just Jesus, the path to peace, just Jesus, the source of strength, and on today we're looking at just Jesus. He is hurt for my healing. If you are able, stand to your feet for the reading of the word. Amen. Just Jesus. He has hurt for my healing. Popular, deservedly so, scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. It's great to see you on today. Amen. And you look good even through the rain. Isaiah chapter 53. And it reads... Just like this. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised. And rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. For a few moments, we want to look at the subject and help me by saying it. Just Jesus, his hurt for my healing. Uh, you may be seated. Amen. And praise God. I pray you had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, I pray that it went well and that your celebration was significant. Uh, but if nothing else, I'm glad for Jesus. And now, God, we thank you for your word, for the fact that when we consider your word, it changes our perspective. We thank you for your word because it empowers us like nothing else and no one else can do. We thank you for your word because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. We thank you for your word because when heaven and earth pass away, your word will stand forever. We thank you for your word because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We thank you for your word because it gives strength for the weary. It gives peace for the trouble. It gives joy for the downcast. We thank you, God, for your word because he's alive, because he lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Solo deal glory. The people of God said amen, amen. and praise God. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that this text is for some uh, troubling or confusing. But I still have to ask the question that came to my heart when I read the text and as I struggled with the text. Simple question is, do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that God is still a healer? Now, I'm not asking you for your church answer. I know you look good. You're dressed up. The pearls look nice. Brother, that suit looks good. I mean, you're well-pressed. You're well-dressed. But I need to know from your heart's core. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. Do you still believe that God is a healer? As I was talking to my sister as she's getting ready to start chemotherapy, and I was praying with her and talking with her, I had to ask myself the question, do I believe that God is a healer? Do I believe that God can heal 
cancer? Do I believe that God can heal HIV AIDS? Do I believe that God can heal schizophrenia, bipolar disorder? Do I believe that God is still a healer? That's the question we have to answer. I hope you're willing to answer it. I, I, I have to answer those kind of questions with the scriptures. Not, not how I feel, not what it looks like, not what it seems like, but I have to. I'm compelled. I'm forced by my deep core. I remember in seminary after I had a very confusing professor. I was walking to this tiny apartment I had. It was about a half a room uh, near the campus. And as I was walking home, the professor had profoundly explained to me that Jesus was not who I thought he was. That Jesus was not all that uh, I was brought up. He said that was my Sunday school religion. But now I had to deal with uh, some theological differences. And he engaged me that Jesus was not all I thought he was. So as I was walking home with my head down, walking towards my apartment, I, I didn't know what to do. So I made a list in my mind. I wrote down on one side, if he's not, and on the other side, if he is. Put a line between the page on my mind's eye. I begin to write down, if he is not, then this isn't true, and then that's not true. And if he is not, then that's not. I had a whole list of, if Jesus Christ is not what the word says he was, then I figured out that nothing else really mattered. So I decided that even though this scholar, this PhD, this intellect had told me that Jesus Christ was not who he said he was, that I was going to believe not the PhD, but I was going to believe the baby born in Bethlehem. I was going to believe that Jesus Christ was all he said he was. And with that, I, I lifted up my head and I made my way to my apartment. Uh, if you've heard me tell the story before, you, you, you know that I got home and I found a long letter from a mentor of years past. He was writing me and he, he didn't write me often. We used the phone. He, he wrote me to tell me, keep the faith and, and, and trust God and everything would be all right. I said, God, you, you knew I needed that confirmation. Just when I sit down, I was going to turn on my, my stone ESPN. And, uh, and, and then one of my preacher friends knocked on my door. He said, Reverend, I didn't know what you were doing, but uh, Ralph West is going to be in Richmond tonight. I want to take you to go hear Ralph West. I don't know who Ralph West is, but I, 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 I don't want to sit here and, and just stay watching these sports. And so I got in the car and we went to church. The preacher stood up. And he didn't preach an average sermon. He didn't preach an intellectual sermon. He preached a spirit-filled sermon. And it was as though the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. When he said the scripture, I stood up. Every word he said, I hung on. I couldn't help but say amen. It was as though God was reminding me that others may say otherwise, but he's still God. That he's still in control. That he still sits on the throne. That even though from time to time the facts don't seem to be in our favor, God is still in charge. And even there are moments and instances and situations that, that seem to make us doubt what we know to be true, that we can keep the faith. Is God a healer? Well, let me take you to the scriptures. I could talk, start you in the Old Testament. I, I love the scripture, uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 5. It, it tells the story of Nahum. Uh, Nahum was a general. He was a successful general because he had uh, warred for Aram and done great things. It said he was successful, he was prominent, and he was prosperous. But it also says that he was Missouri. He was a Missouri, which was another way of saying that he was a leper. So even though he had all this success, he had this sickness that could not seem to go away. And so uh, the word came to him from Elijah that, that, that there was healing for him. But I, I'm fast forwarding it. But he had to go to the Jordan and wash seven times. Now, 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 now I got to tell you, Nahum was, was of high standing. And Nahum said, wait a minute, you're going to send me? to go wash in that dirty water? I, I thought you were going to give me some medicine. I, I thought you were going to heal me. I, I thought you were going to give me something. I, I'm not going to go wash in the Jordan. Anybody can go wash in. There's nothing in the Jordan for me. And then the servant of Elijah said, now wait a minute, uh, great general, Nahum, uh, if he had told you to do something strange and, and, and superstitious, would you have done that? The general said, yeah, I guess I would have done that. He said, well, why don't you go wash? in the Jordan. So this strong, prominent, well-known, well-paid, well-dressed, the servants with him, went to the Jordan. He washed one time. He washed two times. He washed three times. Folk were watching, wondering, what is he doing? He, he washed four times. If 
Finally, he washed five times. Still nothing happened. Nothing changed. Here he is taking this excessive bath. He, he washed six times. Then he said, I guess I'll do it the seventh time. He went under the seventh time. And when he came out, he looked, and all of a sudden, he was miraculously healed. That text is tailored to teach us that God can still heal any way he wants to. Now, notice I said any way he wants to. He, he might want to use a preacher. He might want to use a, a pharmacist. He might want to use a prophet. He might want to use a therapist. He might want to use a counselor. He might want to use chemotherapy. But God is still a healer. He might want to use surgery. But God is, I still believe, that God can heal us in any way he, okay, y'all not feeling it. Let me go to the New Testament. In fact, it's in John chapter 9. It's in John chapter 9 where, where Jesus uh, enters a scene where, where there is a man who was blind. And, 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 and Jesus responds to this blind man in a strange way. The Bible literally says that Jesus uh, spat on the ground. He spat on the ground. And after he spat on the ground, he kneeled down. <coughs> and he made some clay. Some, some muddy clay, and he took that spit and mud, and he wiped it on this blind man's eyes. And the blind man knew he had spit. He heard the spit. Everybody was watching now. This was nasty. This was therapeutically nasty. He wiped one eye. And uh, if you've been blind, if you really want to see, you'll do and go through stuff that other people don't understand. And he took the other hand, and he, he wiped mud on his other eye with spit. And then he said, now I want you to go to Salome and wash. And so here he is with spit looking like a fool and mud on his eye trying to get help from somebody to make it to where he needs to make it. He's going to the pool called Salome, which means sent. And when he gets there, he, he washes his eyes. And after a while, blinking, he sees that he can now see when he could not see even and ever before. God can heal any way he wants to. I don't know what the sickness is. I don't know what the situation is. But I've come by to remind you that God's word is true. And any way he wants to, he can show up and heal. But I need to let you, not only can God heal any way he wants to. Uh, let me give you another text. This is another favorite text. It's Isaiah 38. It says that uh, in Isaiah 38 that uh, Hezekiah received a death report. That the doctor, uh, the prophet uh, Isaiah came and said, Look, the Lord has told me, not your prognosis, but the Lord has told me, uh, not, not some physician, but the Lord has told me that you are going to die. Set your house in order. It's over. Your time is up. You're going to be with the Lord. Yeah. Now... Now, Hezekiah was a praying man, and the Bible says as soon as he got this bad news, he, I love this scripture, I do, you, you just pray for me. He, he turned his face towards the wall. He said, uh, Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you, you know how I've tried to serve you with all my heart. And the Bible says, while Hezekiah was still praying, Isaiah, having given the bad report, now headed towards the door. He gets ready to step over the threshold, gets ready to leave. The house of Hezekiah he said, yes, what, what was that? Okay, all right, you, you said 50, okay. He, he walks back over to this man who's crying and praying, tears coming down his eyes. And he says, Hezekiah, I don't know what you said. Now, I know who you said it to, but I don't know what you said. But Jehovah, God, has told me uh, he's retracted. His statement. He, he's turned back. He's repented on his promise. He, he said that uh, you're not going to die, but I'm going to give you 15 more years. I'm going to give you life, and, and not only am I going to give you life, but 15, but I will protect your people. So Hezekiah lived on. I just came by to tell you that God is still a healer. I understand that we've come into an age of knowledge and understanding and science and all these wonderful things, but God still has the prerogative. He still has the final say. He still has the unmitigated goal to decide when and where and how he can step in. And God is still a healer. It's in Mark chapter 3. There was a, another blind man. He was in 
a man with a withered hand. He was in the temple, and it was on the Sabbath, and, and there was a strict law and rule that said you could not do anything substantial or significant on the Sabbath, especially healing. So the Bible says that they were watching when Jesus walked in and saw this man with the withered hand because they knew that Jesus had a reputation. Jesus had a reputation that every time he saw somebody sick, this was his reputation, he couldn't pass by. Anytime he saw somebody hurt, he, he couldn't keep on, he couldn't ignore people suffering and people sick. And so Jesus sees this man on the Sabbath. And, and the Bible says his accusers were watching. And they were watching to see now, what is he going to do? Uh, they weren't doing anything, but they were watching. Don't go to church to watch, go to church to worship. But they were in the church watching. Just want to see what, what they're wearing, what they're doing, who they're sitting by, all that stuff. But Jesus walks in and he says, 